Mark Bailey from Fig Securities. Mark, good morning to you. Uh, as the uh, the feature there just suggested, um, FOMC really in focus. Walk us through sort of some of the, the bond yield movement that we're seeing as investors seek to position themselves for the Fed. Yeah, good morning. I think that's exactly right. As, uh, as the previous commentator on that little clip uh, did state that, you know, the, 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 uh, the Fed action on uh, Thursday is priced in. We're going to get a 25 basis point hike. Uh, in terms of how investors have been positioning, we have seen that steepening of the yield curve coming through. And again, on Friday, that was that was no difference as well. You know, the, the 10 years was up around about seven basis points to just under two and a half percent. Similar moves as well in the 30 year up to 3.17 percent as well. So I think that uh, steepening is going to continue into next year. And all eyes are going to be on those blue dots and that path of uh, future rate hikes in 2017, 2018. I think probably the market is pricing in around about two to three. Maybe the Fed does indicate four, um, but it's, it's still um, you know, going to be very, very much data dependent. And I'm sure Yellen will again stipulate that in her commentary as well, which will also um, you know, follow the updates in some economic forecasts as well. So we'll get a really good understanding in terms of how the Fed is seeing 2017 and beyond, and more importantly, how it's going to position its interest rate policy to uh, to accommodate those forecasts as well. So it's going to be a really um, important meeting on Thursday, not necessarily for the action, but more for the, uh, the future guidance that the, uh, the markets are going to get. Let's shift focus slightly and also look at Europe. Uh, the ECB, Mark, I wanted to ask you first regarding um, their QE program. Was it tapering? Was it not tapering? Mr. Mario Draghi seemingly saying no. Yeah, I think that's right. I mean, I think in the initial read was, yes, you're cutting, uh, you know, purchases from 80 billion to 60 billion from March, but they also extending that by nine months to December 2017 at the earliest. And so I think we'll probably get to this time next year and the ECB will have already looked to extend again because there's, there's no real good economic news coming out of that Eurozone. Inflation's well below their forecast. Growth's uh, very uh, anemic as well. Uh, in addition, you, I think the ECB as well, what again you're seeing there is, is a steepening of the curve because they would, uh, as part of that policy change, they were allowed to purchase bonds that were trading below the deposit rate, minus 0.4%. So that, that uh, allowed some of the uh, shorter dated bonds to outperform, whilst actually they, some of the longer dated bonds continue to underperform in terms of the asset purchasing. So again, you saw yield curves steepening in Europe, as you have done globally. And I think that ECB decision and announcement uh, just added to that uh, steepening pressure. And again, you're going to see that continuation, especially in terms of how that market is positioned uh, in terms of the US and, and Trump election and the fiscal spending, which potentially, and the fear is, will lead to inflation. I'm not convinced, but the market is certainly positioning for that. Well, elsewhere, sort of also within the, the ECB's jurisdiction, uh, they've refused to extend the bailout deadline for Monty Paskey. Uh, we've got a board meeting coming through on Sunday. Again, what are your anticipations here surrounding perhaps new plans for, for recapitalization? Yeah, there's lots of moving parts with uh, Monty Paskey. Shares were down around about 10% on Friday. I think that we were down as much as 16% at one stage. Is that news of the ECB saying, look, you know, you need to get your recapitalization done by the initial deadline, which was the end of December. Uh, we're not going to extend that to the 20th of January. There's been rumors um, in, in the press that maybe uh, the Middle East and uh, kind of sovereign fund, the Qatari Investment Authority may be looking to uh, kind of put in a, a billion euros to help that recapitalization. Montepaschi needs to raise five billion. There's also some talk as well that, uh, as you say, the, the board meeting that's taking place now and probably get maybe get some headlines uh, in the next few hours is considering um, reopening an offer to do a debt for equity swap. So that's a subordinated retail bondholders, kind of very similar to the hybrids uh, that are issued, the bank hybrids that are issued domestically in terms of allowing them to participate in a debt for equity sh swap. So that again may provide some kind of blueprint, some kind of guidance in terms of how a bank bailing may happen in other countries as well. Although, you know, there's a, as I say, there's a lot of moving parts. It, it's still not clear whether uh, retail bondholders would, would go for that. Uh, I think they've already rejected that offer once, so there'll have to be some kind of sweet in terms with regard to there. But again, you know, it's that important European banking sector which is still causing concern at the start of the year. We obviously had Deutsche Bank and, and its capital position there, but I think in Europe there's a lot of uh, hidden loan losses that uh, banks just aren't taking, and you know, typical 
European way of sticking the head in the sand, hoping that growth and inflation will reduce the debt pile, and that is just not happening in, in the current economic climate. So, yeah, there's going to be a few headlines out of Italy, uh, Montepaschi, uh, in the next uh, few hours and few days, but this is going to continue to roll on and on as they try and search for that additional $5 billion of uh, equity injection that uh, the ECB needs before it uh, will allow uh, additional funds to be uh, uh, injected by the Italian government and obviously not helped by the political uncertainty that we've seen there over the last couple of weeks. Yep, that board meeting taking place on Sunday, so still plenty of time between now and then for, for the headlines to continue to emerge from that story. Mark, thank you so much for your time this morning. Thank you. Have a good one.